What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Against All Odds podcast. Today, I'm here with uh, two old team. I asked if you're good. And you're over there adjusting. <laughs> and I'm just in this. You're good? Just, okay. Yeah. Sweet. Ready to go? Let's go. I'm here with uh, two clowns. Which camera, which camera should I look at? Should I look at look that at, one or that you one? You don't have to look at the camera. Like, oh, you, okay. you couldn't? I mean, that one's focused on both of you. That one okay. over there is focused on me and Anthony. Uh, all right, so let's get this podcast started. Um, these are two old teammates of mine from 2019 with the Tulsa Roughnecks, and they've both been on the podcast before, have had long podcasts that we've done throughout your entire career discussing that. Great podcast. They've done really well. So I'll link those in the description if you guys want to catch up with that. We'll give a brief intro to these guys, and then we'll do see where they've been over the last couple of years, and then we'll hop into like a Q&A format. So let's roll the intro, and let's get started. <music> So, um, Anthony, do you want to start and give like a, a, a two minute summary of your full career and where you've played and everything? Yes. Okay. So up until the Roughnecks, end of the Roughnecks, and then we'll stop there. And we'll stop. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, my name is Anthony Lejean. For those who don't know, uh, I've been playing soccer since I was super young. I was born in America, so I was born in Miami, Florida. Ended up moving to Canada when I was twelve. Uh, hence why I'm in. in a lot of craziness going on right now, but uh, basically, yeah, I've been playing super young. I started playing with house, uh, house league soccer when I was around seven to eight. So mixed boys and girls. And I think as I grew older and older, I started finding more love and passion for the game. And when I got to about 13, 14, that's when I really started uh, to pursue my dream. And I really wanted to be a professional soccer player. So I started playing competitively with a team called Ottawa Royals in Ottawa. Um, yeah, there wasn't much going on, but I was trying to play every single day. Uh, I started off by playing futsal, actually, because uh, as you you guys have seen in the photos, I wasn't the fittest person. I was kind of chubby. And so uh, I've always had pretty good technical abilities, but just growing up, just uh, playing through the Ottawa Royals, ended up playing for the Ottawa Fury FC Academy, which was my first pro academy i get you can I, I i guess you can say and basically we traveled in and out of the states so uh did that throughout my academy years and then i believe when i was 17 18 i wanted to go uh experience france so i left to france i had a couple trials there and obviously didn't work out because at the time there was a lot of things that i didn't know about fo football like visas and things and these are things that uh you learn throughout the experience so it was uh it was it was a tough time but good experience for me to learn from and move forward from. And uh, after France, I went back home, ended up playing two years of college uh, ball, which is not as high as NCAA, but it's the highest level you can play for college football in Canada. Did that for two years on my second uh, my second year, halfway through my, my last year, I got a good opportunity to go, to go play in New Zealand. That's when OPSM first started and that's when Godwin, he used to play in New Zealand. So he hooked me up with the club there, sent me over to New Zealand. And it was, it was a, a, a great time because it was different culture and I was meeting a lot of new different people and to, just to see different, different style of football. So ended up going there. From there, I went to play up in Australia. Uh, from Australia, I went back home and that's when the Roughnecks opportunity came up. So I was doing my preseason in Australia. I was gonna play in the second division there in the Northern Premier League. And then the opportunity came to have a trial with the Roughnecks. And so flew from Australia and then ended up in the Roughnecks in 2019. Yeah. And then that's where we all met. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the first time we've all met. Yeah. Yeah. In 2019. That is. And then uh, actually we met in I 2018. Met you, yeah. Actually my first year. So. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. With the Roughnecks back when I was on trial. Uh, yeah. So then that's where we met. And then we'll go and do the recap. But basically you've been in Europe, Canada, right. America, New mm -hmm. Zealand, Australia, traveling around. And then we'll talk about what's been going on later. DJ, same thing. You want to give a little two-minute summary of your your career? Uh, mine will be a little bit shorter than that. But <laughs> <laughs> DJ's a man of few, fewer words, huh? No, but uh, <laughs> basically, born and raised in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm an Okie boy. Uh, played with a bunch of academy clubs here, pretty much all the academy clubs here. Went to high school at Union High School. Graduated from there in 2017. Went to um, UCA. I did that in the other podcast. <laughs> talked about that. Very, uh, that's an interesting story. Yeah. So go go in and listen to both of these guys' podcasts about their career. But DJs <laughs> make some interesting moves sometimes. Yeah. Bottom line, I left on moving day. <laughs> I left on moving day. And then I uh, went to a combine for FC Tulsa now. Uh, I did well. 
went to preseason with them and then performed pretty well and I thought and so I got signed ended ended up playing in Tulsa for two years mm -hmm. and then uh went to Guatemala and that was just it's been let me tell you it's been a crazy year man crazy year the whole <laughs> mm -hmm. pandemic everything and it's just it's been a crazy year yeah and then that's where I'm now free agent now so mm -hmm. see where we go now yeah. So, I mean, and that, that's TJ jumped. I said to go to Roughnecks and he goes all the way to now, but it's OK. <laughs> no. So basically after Roughnecks, though, because we all we all had a tough year in Roughnecks with with the season. I mean, mm -hmm. we all did well. I think I thought we all had good seasons and in good moments and everything. Mm -hmm. But I mean, when your team's losing and not performing, it's tough to even for the next year, your opportunities mm -hmm. are less, your options are less. The amount of money that you can ask for is less. Mm -hmm. It's It's just tougher. So and and Facts. most players don't come back. And so like I got I was fortunate that I came back, but you guys both had to look for other opportunities. Mm -hmm. Uh once you left Roughnecks, what was going through your head? And then what happened? Like that was 2020, so leading right before the pandemic. So 2019, I'm not even gonna lie to you, like at the end of the year, uh, throughout the whole year, you 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 said we had a hard time. We did, and it was my first year as a pro. And honestly, like Towards the end of the season, I couldn't wait to go home. I couldn't wait to be away from that environment because there's a lot of things closed behind the doors that the players, like that the fans and the kids who watch you, they don't see, right? Like the stress into going to training every day, the stress in competing. And that year was a rough year. We we trained hard every single day. We were always battling every single day. And so uh, it really made me improve as a player. It made me want it more. But towards the end of the year, I was just like, I couldn't wait to go home and just experience new things. But during that year, uh, I felt, just like you said, I felt like I did have a, a pretty decent year. Could have been better, right? I could have been more impactful when I was playing, but uh, everybody, I played. Everybody can say that, you know? Right, right, right. And I was playing, I think I played 12 games in total. I think I played one Open Cup <clears> game. <throat> and even in those 12 games, I felt like maybe I had one bad game uh, where we played against El Paso and uh, I played up against that big uh, winger. And besides, Salgado. Salgado. Yeah, yeah. Salgado. besides, besides he's that game, player. he's, he's, a good, he's player. good, man. And that game, I, I, I started off tough because he's twice my size. He was athletic, good with the ball. And so uh, obviously for me, it was something to learn from. Right. But I just feel like uh, besides that, I, I felt like I performed well my first year. And I thought that Mike would have potentially been wanting to bring me back because I was one of the younger players. So I was 22 at the time and I, I liked Tulsa and I felt like I was training hard every single day and so I thought that I would be on one of the players that he wanted to come back and so when that happened at the end of the year I was kind of like oh well I guess I'm not going to be back here but and so I started thinking about next the the next opportunities and so I ended up going to trials in Stumptown uh, FC which was NISA team at the time now I went there I did a really good job the coach was really interested in me but they weren't sure that they were going to have a season because they had um a lot of people backing in and out and they didn't have the most money there. So they weren't sure if they were going to be able to even have a team in the league. And so basically what happened was uh, during the no no uh, negotiations there uh, fell through, didn't work out. So I didn't go there. Uh, but at that time it was December. I remember I went to trial there in December and then I had also other trials coming up with Trementa FC and Greenville Triumph. Now I ended up in the new year around January, 2020 I ended up going to a trial with Tormenta FC and they already had a left back that was there at the time. But when I was in contact with the coach, they told me, hey, come in, we'll have housing for you, food and everything. And and so I thought, you know what, maybe this might be a better opportunity for me to go rather than go to Greenville Triumph. So I chose Tormenta. Uh, I did I did well in the trials. I felt like the team liked me, but the the player that they ended up signing he was uh, already there before I went there and so they were, I feel like they they already had plans to sign him but they just wanted to see another player and so I think that's when it that's when the pandemic fully happened so I ended up going back home and then two weeks later this whole COVID situation happened and during that time I I kind of thought of it as a blessing because that's when it was super serious right it was like if you had COVID then you had to be super worried and at that time. That's when I went back home. So I was with my family and I was like, you know what? Uh, I'm fortunate, even though things didn't work out with my trials, I was fortunate to be home uh, with my family, to be uh, basically be able to train and get into the next opportunity. And so pandemic hits and as you know, crazy, you can't even train. When I got back home, there was covered in snow everywhere outside. I was yeah. so, uh, so depressed. <clears throat> you know, I was unmotivated. I didn't know 
where uh, I would be able to go next. And even that time I was doing YouTube, I took a little break because I was just like, I, I don't even know what was going to happen. You know, it was it was a tough year and, and not just for me, but for everyone. And so when that happened, I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't mm-hmm. know what I'm going to play. And so the whole time uh, lockdown, we went in lockdown for what, three months? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. While I was in Ottawa and I was just like, well, there's no teams that are bringing in players and things. And so I just tried to do as much as I can to stay ready. Uh, as soon as the sto- snow started to melt, I would be outside training every day. I started getting more involved in social media and started getting more motivation. So it's kind of crazy because the more I started to get back into the videos, the more motivated I was to get out and do it. And then during the whole summer, uh, during that time, I remember something happened back home where uh, one of my really close friends passed away. And uh, during that time, it was probably the hardest hardest time of my life because uh, he was a footballer also who shared the same dream. And so when that happened, I I I, I didn't know what I was going to do. Like I lost motivation. And even though we were still during the pandemic, uh, I still, uh, I'm not going to lie, I, I tried to train as much as possible. But during that time, it was super duper hard. Right. And so I was just blessed to be home, to be with my family. I could go to the funeral, visit his family and things. And so that that was the whole pandemic. So you can imagine I get back home. I didn't sign a contract. Pandemic hits. My best friend passes away. So it was it was kind of crazy. And um, so during that time, I just tried to do the best that I can. And towards the end of the summer, I think I got in contact with a player that was playing in fourth division in Germany. And he saw me on Instagram and he saw my profile and he messaged, he reached out to me. He was like, hey, I like your profile. Uh, you're a good player. I would like, I have some connections in Germany here if you'd like to come out. And so ended up connecting them with uh, OPSM. So Mackenzie and Godwin they ended up setting something for me around September time. And so September, I was supposed to travel to go on a trial. I had a couple of trials. I had a fifth division team, a fourth division team that were going to be looking at me. And once again, I was super excited. So when I knew that was going to happen, I started training every single day, uh, started uh, going out for runs, training with OPSM, doing the gym sessions, just really trying to get ready uh, for everything, you know? And so uh, I go to the airport. I'm about to board my flight. They're like, yeah, you can't travel because North Americans right now, anywhere from North America, we can't go to Germany. That's when they just made that rule. And so I was like, well, this is happens again. You know, so I just went back home. I was like, you know what? Uh, maybe, like we always say, everything happens for a reason. So I was like, you know what? Uh, I'll just go back home, just train, and then go from there. And then I think a little couple months later, that's when you reached out to me. And then you were like, because we talked about it in 2019 when we're like, if you want to come, come for preseason and whatnot. And you reached out to me. You're like, if you want to come, uh, just let me know. And then we can make it happen. And I was actually super excited to come out because I had nothing back home. And so I wasn't even training because we kept going in and out of lockdown. So when you when you said, hey, Anthony, you want to come back? I was like, man, I'm so excited. I can't come. I can't wait to come train. And then ended up with you in January during the preseason. Came in, man. You killed me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those were those were entertaining videos. Like, well, those were really yeah. good. That's good. That's good to hear. It was it was really good. Was like really, I kicked like, this guy's ass. <laughs> <laughs> just, you did. You did. When I first him. came the first week, like. I came in with a with a groin injury because I wasn't doing anything. Imagine mm-hmm. I was in yeah. and out of lockdowns. I felt bad because I was like, I've been doing that for like three months, like straight at that point. Right. Like right. feeling fit. You were, yeah, you were, bro, you were like so fit. I come out to training, training, uh, like it was the best training sessions I had in a long time. Mm-hmm. And with the players too, like going up against Rubio. Imagine my first week, <laughs> Rubio taking me 1v1, making me look like an idiot. And so uh, basically, but I was super blessed at the time because I didn't have anything. And so you, when you told me come out, I was so excited, came out with you. And even though during that time, I didn't know where I was going to be playing. I still had these opportunities. I still had the Germany opportunity where I might be able to go. Uh, and so from then on, I ended up going to the Louisville Combine performed well i did well i had a couple agencies uh that tried to reach out to me a couple a uh, couple clubs that we reached out to but obviously nothing came up because so with the whole covid situation you know how tough it is to get into a trial so they don't really look to bring in players mm-hmm. you guys have to do a like a covid test like once a week or something yeah like that, right? yeah or, and like every new if you want to have a new player come in it's like they need to fly yeah. in or come in then quarantine for two weeks two negative tests before they can train with us so exactly. It's, it's exactly. Hard. So that it's was a hard. situation where uh, teams weren't really looking to bring in players. And so I was like, I got to the point where I was like, you know what, at this point, I just need to sign 
get back into the team environment, get back into the team setting, do as well as I can do, and then go from there. Mm -hmm. And so that's when uh, the opportunity of the USL2, the South Bend Lions, came up. Uh, they reached out to Godwin and they were like, hey, you know what? Uh, we're looking for a left back. This player fits the profile. Is he willing to come out? And it's a semi-professional gig, but at the end of the day, I just got to make the best of what I have now. And the season starts in exactly a month. So May 15th is my first game. I report, I think, May 1st. And that's when we we get into preseason and we get we go hard for two weeks and then we have the game. So I'm super excited. I can't wait to be around with the team setting and, yeah. just, and just be playing. And the other day I trained with this uh, UPSL side team, the one that's here. And I had so much fun. Like I haven't had that much fun in so long. Like yeah. just being back out on the field, it felt amazing. Like, uh, you know, just training. We played small-sided games. Whatever we were doing, 1v1s, I was just like, I noticed that I was super focused because it's been so long since I've been in that environment, mm -hmm. you know, but so that's basically where I'm at now. Uh, just excited to go back into the team setting. It's a lower level than what I was at before, but like I said, got to make the best of the situation and, and opportunities and opportunities. Yeah. Opportunities, games opportunities are games. Exactly. Uh, and it was funny because it's going back to like at the beginning when you're like uh, by the end of the 2019 season. I mean, mm -hmm. at the end of every season, you're excited for off season. But your first one, I think it's mm -hmm. like you're almost looking forward to off season, mm -hmm. and then you don't realize like how much fun it is to be in a team setting until you're a free agent. Mm -hmm. And I think like it for me, especially being injured and being out and or longer off seasons or whatever, and then mm -hmm. you resign again. It's like as you go and do more and more seasons, you want them to end less and less, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like you're not looking forward to off season as much because you're like the best. I mean, off season is great. I get to spend time with my family, but like. Yeah. I, like, I'm excited for that, but I'm all, I'm bummed to be leaving the team setting, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Funny that you said that because the when I when I said I wanted to go back home, I couldn't wait to go back home. Mm -hmm. The first week, I was like, damn, I can't wait to be on the team again. Yeah, yeah. you know, because it was just it was just a different different experience. That's why it's just, you just got to enjoy that moment that you're in because you're if you're in season with the team, that's amazing. You're mm -hmm. at home with your family, amazing. But if you're only, if you're not enjoying the moment, the last couple of weeks of Tulsa because you're thinking of. You just want to go back to your mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. and the same thing. And then you're back home and all of a sudden you're thinking about, oh, I want to be on a team. Are you like, you're not yeah. fully enjoying either. And it's, it's hard to do. I mean, I think every single pro does that, but mm -hmm. it is tough. It's tough. And then DJ, yeah. you kind of already kind of hinted at Guatemala, but yeah. um, after the 2019 season again, um, obviously you didn't come back for 2020. What was going through your mind as you entered into 2020 and that off season and stuff? Uh, main thing was, I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. I felt like throughout the season, I was too comfortable. You know, it's my hometown. But for me, yeah, that that was the main thing. Pretty much the main reason on why I left, you know. Because, I mean, I did speak to Mike after the season. And it was a possible, possible uh, possibility that I could have came back. But, no, I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. And so, Guatemala was an option. And... So, I mean, I had the opportunity for the national team as well. So I saw it as a good opportunity to go play down there. And the money, you know, the money wasn't, it was way better than the USL. I'll tell you that for sure. Way better. Well, at least for me, it was. Well, you go, if you go abroad, a lot of times, like they pay, this, it's, a, it's a flip. Like the marketing and like the, some of the professionalism and the facilities might not be as, as new or as nice. Or like mm -hmm. sometimes like uh, the marketing is big on for mm -hmm. other teams, like Instagram and everything. Mm -hmm. They'll pay, that money goes to paying players, like yeah. you know, salaries. So how was, and then, so you chose that mm -hmm. and then how was that? Uh, so from the get go, I could just tell like, yeah, there's, that's the drop off. You know, the drop off is you get, you get good money, but the drop off is the professionalism, the management. Mm -hmm. And so just from the get go, I could tell they're very unorganized because uh, in order for me to go, I had to be a citizen to, or in order for me to play on that team, I had to be a citizen. So they were going to pay for my nationalization and all that. But in order to get all that, I had to bring my mom with me. And she had to get stuff from like California because she's from California. She had to yeah. get a birth certificate and they only gave us like a week for this. And so I get there, you know, that's my first week there. I get there. They finally bring my mom in. And it's just I could just tell like they were just not, it's not disorganized. Yeah. They made my mom pay for her own. They made my mom pay for her own, her own hotel and all yeah. that. So yeah. obviously they reimbursed her after. But it was mm -hmm. just a big, you know, mess. And so from then I was just I was very unsettled from then. And so after that, uh. The nationalization was only supposed to take a month, month and a half. Ended up taking three months. Mm -hmm. Didn't play, just trained every day, didn't play. And then that's when the pandemic happened, obviously. And after that, uh, went home, 
enjoyed my time with my family actually broke up my girlfriend of four years yeah <laughs> so but yeah uh after that after all that went home and you were training with Tulsa with us during yeah, that, so at, towards the tail end of that, right? When did I start training? Like, it was like July, June. July, right? Yeah, something around there. So and that's when I roasted that's you when in you the guys half, half field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I roasted him. Yeah, so I did that. <laughs> Rematch whenever you want. It's open. It's open. Whenever you want, bro. Whenever you want. <laughs> you whenever you four, want. Four, you're the 40 ask yards him, this time. You're the ask, loser. Just ask him to play two touch. DJ, DJ improved in two touches. Is he? Yeah, he's got Because I remember better. me just flicking that ear constantly <laughs> in 2019. <laughs> Stop. He used to be Stop. red. Stop. <laughs> so no. you're training with Tulsa for a little bit. You're mm -hmm. here for like a, a, a month off and on? Uh, was it a month? It was like a month and a half, uh -huh. I would say. And then just waiting because in Guatemala, the restrictions were so much different. Yeah. Like uh, I remember March like 16th is when the restrictions there started. Mm -hmm. And so they had like... 4 p.m. You had to be in your house by 4 p.m. or you get arrested. So <laughs> you get arrested? Or you get arrested, I swear. Damn. So like I could I would open my door after like four, like at 4 30, the whole street would be empty. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. And so but Antigua, I like it was nothing against the team or anything. It was nothing against uh any of the players. Antigua is a beautiful city. It's my it's the motherland for me, basically, because my grandma's from there, my whole family's from there. It was a beautiful city. I loved it. I enjoyed the time there, the people. Was it even better food as well? But came back from that quarantine, training with FC Tulsa, and then I flew back November, mm -hmm. beginning of November, to team. Mm -hmm. And then things just got more and more janky with him, and so uh, ended up just cutting the contract altogether, kind of getting like a payout thing. And now that's where I'm at right now, free agency. And you got back here in February. 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 Yeah. And then so from February on now, you guys have just been kind of like training because mm -hmm. you guys have both yeah. been in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. So you've been training together, yeah. doing some workouts together. Workout, John workouts. Terry workout. John, yeah. Te John Terry workout. yesterday, actually. I've been killing him, yeah. on, the two, I've been killing him on the two touch. Have you? So, yeah, he's <laughs> doing the two How's that? Uh, what'd you get on the John Terry? How many sets? Uh, yesterday I did 15. 15 sets? But at 11.5. Yeah, I'm getting, there, I'm getting to 12. I'm getting to 12. I'm getting yeah, 20, no, sets, record, no, 20 no. sets, 12 miles per hour. <laughs> your I record is flying. crazy. Your record is crazy. I don't yeah. know. No, that's, I, I mean, literally, I almost think that's to the point of being unnecessary, mm -hmm. like in off season, you know? Like mm -hmm. if you want to, if you're go, about to go in a trial and you want to be flying when you get in, I think you can peak like right yeah. there. But like maintaining right now, if you're doing 15 to 20 sets of the John Terry, especially mm -hmm. if you're going faster, like that's a good a good level. Yeah, and I'm trying to keep it like one or two times a week. I don't want to do. I try to. I was gonna do third, but like training, like training with him, like he kills me. Yeah, so it's like, tiring. It's tiring, bro. Like the John Terry workout is harder than people think it is. Like, <laughs> that's so hard. I remember man. when I first did it, and there was so there was an onslaught of this is too easy. You're a pro. It should be tougher. I'm like, don't yell. This isn't my workout. This is John Terry's <laughs> workout. John first Terry's off, workout. first off, don't be mad at me. And then second of all, before you guys talk about it, go and do it, and then come yeah. back to me. And then as time went on, and more and more people did it. The, the comments about it being easy got less and less. <laughs> All of a sudden, now people yeah, are like, bro. And someone like, will comment like, it's too easy. Someone's like, have you tried it? <laughs> like, try it, bro. You'll throw up. Yeah. It's funny. Um, okay. And then so for your guys' training sessions, for your workouts right now, mm -hmm. um, is it just you two? I see you guys been training with a trainer a couple yeah, times. Yeah, so Alex, he's the UPSL coach here. Mm -hmm. And he does uh, some sessions with us. But whenever he can't, me and DJ will just go and we'll run a session ourselves. And do you guys just do like passing, some 1v1s, uh, two touch? Yeah. yeah. So we we focus more on like the technical side because mm -hmm. sometimes he'll do his gym sessions by himself and then I'll do. He doesn't like invite a, you? No, he doesn't invite me, man. He never, he never told me, yo, come do the John Terry with me. <laughs> I'm, like, DJ, I'm like, DJ, you want to train today? This guy doesn't even tell me about his John Terry workouts. He doesn't <laughs> hey, tell me anything. I just do it at the house, man. Yeah, no, because his, his gym, the gym that he works out at uh -huh. is like in his apartment. So, okay. So, so I would I have, have to go like all the way over there, and and I'm close to a gym that I work out as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I've also been doing a lot of uh, high interval training with the Zoom sessions that that OPSM have been running, mm -hmm. and so I've been doing that. And so our sessions usually run from 45 minutes to an hour and 15. Mm -hmm. so just focus on technical. So a lot of ball work, a lot of passing. Sometimes we'll do some finishing, and sometimes we'll do some one v one things. And so that's really what we've been focusing on. So it's been today was a good like today we had a really good session. We went out there good hour and 15 smash it out and that's what we that's good doing. Mm -hmm. and uh i mean you're vlogging about this topic today and if mm -hmm. you guys don't know anthony has a youtube channel shout it out here anthony has a youtube channel where he basically cool. does like day in the life vlogs training sessions um and just mm -hmm. kind of especially you'll, you'll probably do more and more as you go into uh 
uh, with you, <laughs> Allentown, or not Allentown, the uh, South Bend. South Bend, right. Allentown's yeah. the combine coming up. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm excited to see that. And it, as that yeah, comes I'm in. actually excited to see that, like, because right now, so when I was with you, obviously the views would be a lot, you know, higher because, <laughs> uh, because you're a big presence in the YouTube game. And so right now Aww. my, my views, my views, <laughs> <So> my views, <laughs> uh, my views have kind of dropped down a little bit, but I, I like, I obviously, I don't mind that they've dropped down. I, I want to, I really want to reach out and just try to help as many kids as I can improve, mm -hmm. uh, technically or whatever it is that they want to learn from me. But uh, I'm excited to be, be in that team setting because I haven't vlogged that yet. Mm -hmm. So like when I was in, in Tulsa, it was my first contract. So I was kind of scared to bring that out. But now I think uh, with the way that I've talked to the coaches and they've kind of known me uh, for who I am, what I do with YouTube and things. And so I'm kind of excited to show that team setting, you know, the training and whatnot and the travel. So mm -hmm. I'm pumped up. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Um, so yeah, go check out Anthony's uh, Anthony's YouTube channel with that. And speaking of <laughs> YouTube channels, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so if you guys have been following for a while, you guys listen to the podcast. DJ was the very first guest, professional player guest I had on the Against All Odds podcast. Mm -hmm. Podcast did awesome, but the the stipulation, the 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 deal that we had was that after that podcast, right? No, it was after the vlog. It was after oh, the vlog. Oh, that's uh, vlog, the podcast. Yeah. So you did the podcast the and did really well. Yeah. But then after the vlog that you also took over my channel, did a vlog on my channel, and it did amazing, like a hundred and something course, thousand views. Uh -huh. But the thing with that vlog was once he was done with it, the whole point of that was for him to then, then take people who watched that video and push it over to his YouTube channel where he would start vlogging and making videos. And mm -hmm. that was... Almost two years, two ago. years ago. It was exactly, I think it was two years ago. Exactly. Right. So you know, it was like, in, I think it was like in June or in June? May okay. or something. Cause something I had, like I was recovering from my sports hernia. Okay. Right. Um, and how many videos you got? Like, what is it? 20, you have 25, 20 videos on your channel now. What was it? <laughs> zero. 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 For, a second, zero. for a second, he was confused. He oh, thought was he was like, being serious. Oh, zero. <laughs> oh, it's zero <laughs> videos. I mean, I get it. Two years, it's hard. You can't make a video in two years. I can't years. make a video in two years. Yeah. No, no, come on, come on. Bro, this guy, he was in Guatemala. Like, imagine being in Guatemala and being able to vlog. Bro, like, that's that's what made me mad is because you know? I would see snippets. The one time DJ would post a photo in, in three months. The one time he'd post an Instagram story. And I'm like, that place mm -hmm. looks sick. I want to so, I want to see so more nice, about it. Right? I want to hear. I want to see the apartment. I want to see where you're living. I want to see the city. I want to see DJ speaking Spanish. Yep. No, I, I under, totally understand. It's just, bro, I wasn't playing at the time. So, like, I feel I, like, I feel yeah. like you that's know. another topic, though. Same with you. Yeah. Uh, the peep, honestly, people like seeing the videos the most, or they might not at the time, but the things that people connect with the most is when you're at your low times. Mm -hmm. So, like, when yeah. you were in middle of quarantine in Canada and mm -hmm. like you were going through, I know that you were in a pretty extreme situation there. Yeah. So, like, I understand. But, um, but like, even when you are like, don't have anything and you're mm -hmm. training by yourself, like, that's, that's the what realness people like right. people like mm -hmm. to see realness you know yeah so like if you aren't playing like and you talk about like not playing and people go through that you know yeah. if you only show the good times people are like i that's can't true. connect with that because my life's not always good, good times time, yeah yeah that's no. just my experience with no, it. you true, don't have to show that yeah, no, i agree no 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 i agree 100 percent. because you want to be real with the viewers you want to show them everything that happens yeah right so that's why i'm not going to stop again so if you guys famous last words here I'm we go not, i'm not gonna stop again i promise i well, no matter what i go through no matter what's going on i'm always i'm gonna vlog it uh so i'm just gonna keep mm -hmm. going man. and i'm messing with you if you don't the thing is being a <laughs> making youtube videos is is time consuming it's hard mm -hmm. you just put yourself out there and it's hard to come up with videos if you don't want to do it then you don't have to do it no it's not that i don't want to do it. it's just i want to do it in a different way you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm not knocking down the vlogging. Like, cause it's just, I just feel like I couldn't do that all the time. Like maybe a video here with yeah. vlogging, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. maybe, but like, I want to have other stuff on my channel. You know, I don't want to just have vlogging on my channel, you know, mm -hmm. maybe like, yeah. like, have you seen like, you know, Jay Alvarez is yeah. like videos yeah. like that. Like, bro, like I'm trying to do something like that. Like yeah. something crazy like that. <laughs> but the thing is, the thing is once you start, cause one thing that I realized is before I was like, I don't have any video ideas, but now that I just, Whatever it is that I'm doing, if I'm vlogging it, as I'm doing it, I start to get newer ideas. Like yeah. the video that I'm doing today, the struggles about free agency. I was just thinking about it the other day and I was like, wait, I'm a, like, I, I was a free agent. Like, why don't I just do a video on that? And so when you do it, when you start doing it, you're going to get more ideas of different things mm. that you can do. You know what I mean? And yeah. so 
Yeah. And then mm-hmm. you start talking about one topic. You're like, this should be literally three different topics. Like, I got to break down just, further. Yeah, and then, then it just stems and stems, it down, and stems and huh? stems. And then, like, now I got a thing on my phone where I can just go, <laughs> like, all through the video ideas. And it's crazy. I've made, like, 500, 600 videos. And just, I still feel like I got so mm-hmm. many topics to talk about. Like, I got a new Two Minute Tuesday one I'm thinking about, about collagen. I want to start, I want to research collagen now and do that. And then I was like, collagen, mm-hmm. well, now I should do a video about all the supplements breaking them down. And I was like, well, that might, and then so you can go deeper and deeper. All right. So that's where you guys have been though. We've caught up now. Yep. Mm-hmm. You guys are that's back in Tulsa, at. but Anthony about to leave. DJ, n- new opportunities coming up. What, definitely what, new opportunities th- yeah, up. stuff is don't coming up. I don't want to say anything yet. You don't have to. It's not, but definitely. That's Definitely good. Got some coming up. That's good to hear. You're gonna oh, tell oh, me oh, out, oh. out of yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, of course. okay. We'll we'll talk <laughs> after the podcast. But no, I, it is tough to. I never talk about opportunities I have until yeah. it, not even until it's certain. Like I don't even like really talking about where I'm going to trial. But that's also because I don't want kids commenting on their yeah. Instagram page and stuff. You better sign Matt. You better sign Matt. <laughs> yeah. Sign Matt. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, that's good. That's good to hear. Yeah. And how was that? Because this is like the topic of your video, though. But in free agency, especially like now. How is it training and staying focused? And is it difficult for you? Is it a bit Mm -hmm. easier because you guys are together? How's that been? So in the beginning of my free agency, when I had nothing, it was tough. Mm -hmm. You know, it was tough to find motivation, but I always had to remind myself that there's going to be an opportunity because there will. If you you keep putting in the work and you're networking and you're doing what you're supposed to do, you're going to get an opportunity, right? So I wanted to stay ready. And then coming in Tulsa, not being able to go back home was another... Uh, bridge that I had to go over or just something unexpected but then it made it easier that I'm here with DJ because you know how it is when you have someone to train with you uh, rather than doing solo uh, training sessions it's so much easier to do it with a person Mm -hmm. so at first it was tough but then um, as I was with DJ it started getting easier and then things started like happening and opportunities started popping up and it just got easier and easier as I kept going through it. Okay, so now I got a uh, a little list of questions on my phone that are just completely random. Some related okay. to soccer, some just stupid ones. But uh, okay. I want to go through these and uh, see your guys' take on them. <laughs> look, what I na- look, look what I titled it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you have to read oh it out loud. <laughs> Did you see it from Yeah, there? I saw it. <laughs> um, okay, question number one. Uh, what's one thing that you wish you would have known before starting your career as a pro footballer? Um, I wish I would have known the logistics behind it. So, um, what I mean by that is like the traveling, the visas, because like I told you, I went to France and I was all in. I was like, you know what? I'm 18. I'm going to France and I'm about to sign a professional contract in France, not knowing anything. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really stupid of me because I had no idea. Right. But imagine if I had someone telling me about these things, like Anthony, you need this visa to go here. In order, if you want to go to Brazil, you have to do this. Do you know what I mean? So I wish I knew more of the logistics side, whereas like I wish I had someone that could tell me that side because then I could look at it differently and it would obviously change the path of, of my journey. So Yeah. For me, I mean, kind of the same thing, just how hard it is to be. I mean, not how hard it is to be pro, you know, how hard it is to become a pro, you know, getting in, getting into a team, just getting into a combine, you know, you have to do so mm-hmm. good. So just knowing all that now, you know, mm-hmm. I wish I would have known that earlier rather than just, you know, just uh, hope and pray. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think that like, so this is something I think about a lot because people ask me like, if I would do it again, would I have gone to Germany? Because I kind of did the same thing. Like I had somebody that brought me over there and told me about the visas, but mm-hmm. like still like you don't really know how hard it is going to be. And I had mm-hmm. to go and cheat right. the system and become a student. Right. And and Gießen Gießen University Stadt and like <laughs> and like I was not a student I just did that to get right. a student visa. Mm. But do you think that like yeah maybe you would have wanted somebody to give you a little bit more information? But mm-hmm. do you think that finding that firsthand was like the reality check that you needed to get that and then to have that under your belt? So then you're like no I need to research the visa policies right. now. I need to look yeah. at this. I need to look at this. What do you think? Yeah, I think a hundred percent, hundred percent, because it's a tough question because. It's good that I went through, I experienced those because it honestly, it made me a better player because during the time that I was there, I was like, oh my God, what this, it's like a whole new world of mm-hmm. football, right? So made me a, a better player and I learned from it. But if I could go back and do it differently, I would a hundred percent, you know, because who knows, like if you knew that before you could have had this opportunity, like at the time I was, I was doing really well because I was in the pro academy of Fury. I was training with the first team. 
and things were going really well for me, you know? So a hundred percent, I could have, I would have done it differently. Right. Yeah. And like, think- and for you too, like, uh, like that's almost something too of like realizing how competitive the pro environment is. Oh, yeah. That's something you kind of have to feel I, firsthand. I, 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 was, I, remember, I remember being like 19 thinking, hey, you know, I'm going to go in, I'm going to kill these guys, you know, yeah. I'm going to do well. You get in there, you yeah. get smacked, man. It's just, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's the then same. all of a sudden you're going 1v1 against Matt Sheldon and losing every single time. Yeah, that's time. not true. That's not yeah, true. That's Don't listen to me. That's, that's not <laughs> No, but I mean, it is, it is though. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe if you had a mentor to tell you that and be like, look, you're not just going to come in, you're flying. But still, like, it is something you, ha- you have to experience a pro team and realize how competitive every single player there is. Because those are the moments that, like, you... You know, it's gonna make or break you. you yeah, know, you got it. You don't got it. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree, bro. Because the the biggest thing I realized in my first year of training with Tulsa Roughnecks was the intensity that we train at every day. It was like, whoa. When I went back home, and a lot of my friends that I played with that play at a competitive le- level or whatnot, when I went back home, when I played, like it was, you saw like the difference. Mm-hmm. So facts, during facts. that during that intensity, it's like how how much hungrier you were, you know, how much more you want to win. So all those things that they, they all play into, into a huge part of it. So bet fam. <laughs> <laughs> you better put that on. I will. I mean, it's, I, don't, bet fam. I, don't, I don't edit this at all. I just cut out the, where I have to yeah. move and change the cameras. Um, you know, <laughs> Matt loves embarrassing himself. Yeah, I do. It is. It's like a, what's it like when you enjoy hurting yourself? Like a masochist? Like, I don't know. I'm, uh, I don't know, I don't know what that is. That's, Masochist, I've never. I keep forgetting you guys are really dumb. I got to dumb this podcast down for you. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. But um, uh, what was I just going to say about, uh, what were you just talking about? Uh, so we're the dumb ones. Yeah, no. Yeah, I'm, we're the dumb ones. Dang. This is your podcast, bro. So we are talking about the intensity and trading. I remember now. Amateur and pro. Yeah, no, that's one thing I noticed too, especially with guys who, um, like younger players that are coming and joining a pro team for the first time, or even mm-hmm. p- players that've been on like been playing semi pro and come up. It's like the ball comes to their player, and it's not, they're not pressuring. It's like mm-hmm. that they're three yeah. yards off. Mm-hmm. I'm like, are you gonna go and pressure him? Or are you just <laughs> gonna stand there and look like an idiot? Like step, like go. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with uh, like on the the time on the ball. Like people will have time on the ball and start to turn, and there's no one, no one there. And then on the flip side too, like the speed of play and just the intensity of it, like it's just so much more intense. You can just see immediately mm-hmm. just on the intensity of the even the step, you know, like a pro will go and for five seconds, go 100 percent intensity so that they don't have to defend for three minutes, you know, yeah. while mm-hmm. amateur mm-hmm. players might just passively defend for three minutes and then wait till the ball like comes to Hopefully them, you know, comes to them. Yeah. yeah, no, it definitely yeah. All right, cool. So that's question number one. Idiot. I just realized I've been chewing on ice this whole time. <laughs> so, Straight into so the, the mic. Podcast, you're, gonna, you're gonna hear me in the, the back. Time. Time. Oh my god! <laughs> At least DJ <laughs> spit out his gum. Yeah. At least we got that. Okay. Oh, um, Damn, I shouldn't do. I should got no water, no ice. So you know how if you get like the death sentence, you get a last meal. Mm-hmm. What okay. would be your last meals? Hmm. My last. Does it have meal? to be like one like? certain type of food or can it be no you can make a dish you can have whatever I can you make a dish of yeah. whatever i want okay my last meal okay dj you go first I'm no I'm, I'm gonna put my dish together oh so you, you don't want to go first on no 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 i'm almost okay. ready though I'm just, <laughs> okay. super computer over there <laughs> calculating this right, meal okay you go first right, go dj i would have chow mein okay from oh, i can't say when if you say panic too many there's too many good places don't bro. say pan express chow mein <laughs> tamales tamales mm-hmm. and rice i've never tried a tamale before you never had tamale? No, never. Are you serious? Yeah. Uh, Even the time I, I, when I was at your house, remember, I never had it. I never tried it that one time. Yeah. My mom makes good tamales. Yeah. Dude, Damn. Take what this guy to... What the heck? Take this guy to Taco Stan, it, yeah. Don Francisco's or something and give him this guy yeah. a tamale. I'm going to have to. Okay. Let's that's go, it, though? No, no dessert? What are you going to have to drink? Oh, dessert? Like, it's a meal. <laughs> See, that's hard, meal, bro. bro. That's so hard. Because there's so many good things. But yeah, I'd but probably just have, like, some ice cream or something. What flavor? Ooh. Orange sherbet, I'm gonna, I'm sure. so orange shirt. Orange That's not even ice cream. That's orange sherbet is an ice cream. Okay. Uh, what about drink on the side? Though you better it's not gonna say have chocolate to be milk. soda, bro, because it's my last meal. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go with the old fashioned Dr Pepper. <laughs> Dr Pepper. Okay. Dr Pepper. Right. Interesting okay. meal. Turn? Yeah. Okay, so I'm super basic. So for my main dish, I'm having McDonald's. <laughs> no, what the? <laughs> hell? I'm not having McDonald's, bro. I'm having some pasta. Penne pasta. That I love pasta. Yeah. It's like my favorite dish. 
pasta, penne pasta, pasta with grilled chicken. Okay. Okay. I'm having asparagus on the yeah, side. That's so basic. I love asparagus. I'm a basic guy. Well, you're about to die, though. <laughs> you're about to die. <laughs> I'm a basic that's guy. What you want? When you're I about to die, that. you could have like, anything in the world. You could have escargot. You could have caviar. I've, exactly. I've never tried caviar before. I haven't either. But I, no, I would. Bro, I'm so basic. Like I would just have. Okay. Like, like when I eat pasta, I just love pasta. So you literally would have the meal that. That you can go to Walmart right now yeah. and get get it for five. <laughs> okay, bucks. okay, okay, okay. So let me think about it again. Give me, okay. give well, me I'll, five I'll, seconds. While you, you go, think, you go, you go. I'll give okay, you my you answer. Okay. okay, let's go. I would go and I would, would want like the Japanese like steak that's like two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, it's uh okay. wagyu wagyu. It's okay. literally like the way they make it and the way they have it with the cow is like it's so expensive. But a wagyu steak, I would have a big thing of mashed potatoes on the side. Um, I'm going to go with asparagus as well. Asparagus. Okay. Just copy my answer, but okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would I would also do, I would also do a, I would probably do like in and out like in and out burger and some French fries. And then, because right. that's like, because I got the nice food, but then I got my guilty okay. pleasure food. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to drink chocolate milk, 100%. Because yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter if I have gas. Like, <laughs> I, I don't even need the lactose free yeah. one. I can have the normal chocolate milk. And then dessert, uh, I'm going to have chocolate molten lava cake with vanilla ice cream. Okay. okay. That's a that's meal. A, that's, that's a last meal right there. Okay. Okay. okay that's not, impressive. Not, not grilled just... chicken penne pasta. <laughs> Bro, but that's what I like. That's, like. that's what I like to eat, man. Okay. Anything in the okay, world. Okay. So anything in the world. Yeah. It's so hard, bro. I'd probably have... Okay. I'd go... Okay, if I can have anything in the world, I would get, yeah, same thing. I would get steak. Okay, next question. Listen, no, no, let me finish oh, my okay, answer. Okay. okay, let me finish my answer, man. I would get steak and asparagus, mashed potatoes on the side. I'd have a side of Chick-fil-A because you guys know I love Chick-fil-A. I would Everybody loves die Chick -fil -A. for Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. Chicken, Spicy chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A, large fries, lemonade on the side from Chick-fil-A. Uh, I'd, for dessert, I'd have a chocolate chip cookie. Mm -hmm. I'd have red velvet cake with ice cream on top. Vanilla ice cream on top. Jeez. Wow, I like that. There you go. There, there, there you go. go. See, you copied my answer a lot, but that's I didn't okay. copy. What? How you did, did I steak, copy? mashed potatoes, asparagus, and a guilty pleasure <laughs> okay, of fast wait, food. So first of all, <laughs> French first fries all. in a burger. That's literally what I said. <laughs> no, 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 no. Asparagus, you copied from me. <laughs> One meal, and you copied everything from me. Okay, you whatever. Next question. <laughs> God, that was a painful question. <laughs> that was hard, but is that something Matt definitely thought about before? Yeah, he, definitely. That, those, that's, what spot goes, with that. That, that's what goes through his head. He's like, I wonder if I had to. Well, do so you know why? Because like I was on like Reddit or like some social media, like Instagram, and there's like pictures of inmates' last meal. I'm like, well, huh? And there's some weird ones on there. And I'm like, what would I? And then so that's how I started thinking about it. So now it's a question I like to ask. Um, okay, now we're gonna go back to soccer with okay. a little bit more, uh, more. Okay. Uh, focused how did you get your first agent and was it because we all are with opsm mm -hmm. um which is our agency from ottawa but who was your first agent and how did you get that one because the first agent i think is always tough uh i got my first agent actually because i was playing with jeff when i was 17 or 18 at mm -hmm. the time and i was playing with jeff so jeff just came from uh university and and then godwin uh he was at the game but this was before he started OPSM, and this was before he was thinking about becoming an agent. Yeah. Uh, and so he just came back from New Zealand, and so he was transitioning into that, into training and getting into that. And he saw me play, and I don't know, that's when he he said he first noticed me. So when I was playing with Jeff and he noticed me, I talked to him. I remember our first game of the season, I talked to him after the game. Uh, but obviously he wasn't an agent yet. Yeah. But but turns out uh, he started training us. Uh, started doing uh, different combines and different things, and so he got into the agency, and that's how I got my first agent. Oh, so you're, it was Godwin. It then? was Godwin. Yeah, Godwin okay. was my first one. Yeah. Huh. Thankfully, mine was like kind of the same way. Jeff, because I had Jeff. Oh, it was it was OPSM too? It, yeah, OPSM, my yeah. my first okay. agency was Jeff. I got it through Jeff. I met him. I don't even think he was on the team yet. I think this was 20, my first year. And he was like coming on. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. He came in in like, like in July or August. Yeah. He was like, came in at, at the same time, right? No, he came in like a month before I did. Okay. Cause I had just missed the window. I came from New Zealand. Okay. And then Jeff came like a month before that. And they were sorting out his contract or papers or whatever. Yeah. I remember But it that. messed okay. up. Right. And basically that's, I mean, 
he uh, Jeff gave me Godwin's info. Godwin contacted me, and that's mm-hmm. how I basically you know signed with OPSM. Yeah, so it's basically through Jeff, both of them, mm-hmm. like a like a, a mutual connection that you had. You were a player, you performed, and then Jeff was like, "Hey, here's the an agent." So in the like the broader mm-hmm. scheme, this is like for players because like finding your first agent is tough, yeah. and I think that a lot of people don't realize that you know at, out of everybody you're connected with, especially even at a younger age. Mm-hmm somebody's got a brother a cousin Mm -hmm. an uncle somebody's got knows a player that's playing in finland who has an agent like Mm -hmm. there's always everybody's separated from an agent by one or two strings you know yeah exactly so it's like you have to kind of like Mm -hmm. go and put yourself out there perform on the field first but then also you know be open about yeah i'm looking for an agent who do you have do you know anybody and then you kind of and sometimes it's lucky and they come to you but sometimes Mm -hmm. you know you build you find your own but it's like it's like that crazy stat like everybody in the world is supposedly separated by seven connections like everybody that's wow. crazy that i don't know if that's 100 percent true but that's the right. theory i think and you can oh. literally go from like lebron james to like my aunt lynn <laughs> <laughs> and from seven people go well lebron james knows this person who knows this yeah. person and then to my aunt lynn wow. hey that i mean that's honestly like makes that, sense yeah it yeah. makes sense yeah. yeah so crazy huh that's so crazy mm-hmm. that's so put cool. it like that yeah all right, next question. Let's go. Um, what's some expectations versus realities that you realized with pro football? You know what I mean? Like, so mm-hmm. like you thought like when you were younger and you're thinking about being a pro or your next five years and then all of a sudden you get here and you're like, wow, that is nothing good or bad. Right. But that's not what I expected. Uh, I have two things. Okay. So in North America, I would say it's, uh, the money wise mm-hmm. when you're younger and you see the pro players and you see them you think it's oh yeah you think so they're true. getting so much money and what you don't know is when you get in that environment especially if it's your first contract or you're in the early stages of your career it's it's not at all what you what you think it is you know because you grow up and you see the, Neym- the neymars you see the messies and the amount of money they're getting and you're just like you know you want to be making that much too so there's that, and then there's also, uh, I just thought it would be a lot less stressful. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like a good stress. Yeah. Like, you're training every day, and... It's a pressure. It, yeah, the pressure, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, if you don't perform today, you're not going to be playing in the weekend. Yeah. And even if you think you're performing, you think that you're doing well, and you're not in the lineup, it's just like, like, you know, it's just so much pressure. It, it's literally to, like on the like a ball comes out to you and you're on and you have yeah. like your five crosses and yeah. if i don't get this cross in yeah. and i don't hit the striker then then i'm not going to get a good uh look for this weekend and if i don't play this weekend and that other person comes in and plays well then now i don't i'm not going to be going to get any game time if i don't get any game time i'm not going to come back this year i'm going to have struggle to find a contract next year if i struggle yeah. to find a contract next year i might not make enough money and then i'm i have to quit that's literally from yeah. one cross. It stems all the way up to like my career's over, you know? And it's yeah. funny, but like it is, it's, it goes through your yeah, head. It does. Yeah, yeah but I, that's what I would say. Pressure, like the, that's the most number one thing that that I, I felt. About. That's mm-hmm. kind of, you kind of took mine. The first one was good though. I like that, that money one, that yeah. money, that is so true. Because I mean, when you're a kid, you're like, oh my God, these guys are making the big bucks. They're mm-hmm. pros. Mm-hmm. And then you go and there's guys that are like, barely making anything mm-hmm. yeah and it's just like, especially usl and like lower yeah. leagues around the world yeah like, that's man yeah that sucks even it's crazy too like even like you think in like la liga the lower teams in la liga and you have some of the younger players there they're not right they're in la liga and they're yeah, not yeah. they're not making yeah, crazy yeah. amounts of money yeah and it's, it's funny because like the uh i had this funny i had this zoom call with this one player and he was like yeah what's the typical salary in the usl and i'm like well it ranges but you know typically a, a good one in there is like two thousand to three thousand bucks a month yeah. goes oh that's great you know i would expect more blah 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 i'm like yeah yeah exactly that, uh, that's why i say i say that publicly it's not a lot of money and then he's just like well why is that like blah 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 and i'm like okay and this guy wants he actually had the goal of playing in the usl and he's like i just can't believe that you know blah blah, blah. I'm like okay you want to play in the usl you straight out of college now because he's like a freshman in college you're straight out of college mm-hmm. you go and you come into my team fc tulsa they like you they're like no you know what yeah you're okay well, guess what we'll uh we'll offer you 500 bucks a month I'm like, are you going to take it? He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, there you go. Exactly. (laughs) There you go. There you go, buddy. It was funny. You just got to have that moment of realization. Like, oh God, I'm like, nobody's going to come here and and give you more money than they have to. Mm -hmm. Not like, no, it's not, it's, it's a business. They're trying to, they're trying to get you for as cheap as possible. Mm -hmm. 
And it's just funny how it works. Anything other, any other expectations you guys can think of? It's kind of that too. You kind of hit it. The business part of it. Mm -hmm. Like, it, I feel like sometimes it's more of a business thing than it is like football. Yeah. You know? I have but, I have a, a good expectation. Too. Yeah. Did I cut you no, off? You can, yeah, just, no, you can just no. Next time, just in the middle yeah, of the sentence, cut them off. Just cut me off. <laughs> I, actually thought, I thought you were done talking. No, no, no you, keep keep going, going, you, you go. Keep you go. You got it. You got it. I, I lost my train of thought. Oh. <laughs> I lost my honestly. I lost my oh train my of thought. I'm gonna be honest. I lost my train of thought, bro. So you go. Yeah, Anthony. This is I swear, bro. You like your world. I had my. I was focused. You said something, and then you know what? I'm just gonna title this the Anthony Lejean podcast. Uh, go on okay so i had a good one good one yeah uh, a good one that I, I i thought of was the connections that you make so um growing up obviously i thought that if you're a pro soccer player you can meet a lot of different new people you know and so that was that was a good expectation for me where uh wherever you play there is someone that knows someone right like i met you guys in, in the roughnecks and now uh let's say you go play somewhere else in the mls it's like you know you the connections that you make uh, just, just good expectation that, mm. that I have. And then yeah, multiply. Right. The, the, the people that you meet, you know, I feel like make it so much better, you know, mm -hmm. people that you meet throughout football. Because it's just, you know, it's people from different backgrounds, different cultures, you know, people that have been piss poor people, you know, mm -hmm. with freaking, uh, what is that? What did uh, that player last year have? <laughs> a Jaguar. A Jaguar. No, no, I'm just like, Callum's not a big deal. <laughs> Don't hype up Callum. That guy sucked. <laughs> But yeah, I'm just like, bro, it's so crazy, man. Yeah. No, I, another good expectation I had is like, like I always thought for for the pro level, it was going to be, I almost kind of, I saw like it was fun and, and you know, you're a team and everything. It'd be a team atmosphere. But for some reason, especially as I was like going on my first trials, I kept on thinking like all the players were going to be like less of a family and it'd be more like, and it is, it's a little bit less of like a team like college or something or like your club team and friends. <laughs> and it's more of like, like pros and you just you, you don't have to be friends with your teammate mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but i i underestimated how close you actually get with your teammates mm -hmm. like it, you, it really is it's crazy how they become like your best friends Literally. so quickly yeah. a month in and all of a sudden you're like yeah you're your super friends. close and i always thought it was gonna be more uh hostile you know because you're competing mm -hmm. with each other so that was like a pleasant surprise i'm like wow you can compete on the field but still be best Gross. friends you know um okay good good answers next question um What's the best compliment you've ever received? Best compliment I've ever received? Yeah. DJ, you go first with this one. Keep it PG. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know if I can say it. Here, <laughs> I don't know, man. That's kind of hard. Best compliment I've ever received. Like, does it have to be with soccer or just anything in life? What, anything. The best compliment you've ever received that made you feel just like, wow, that was, that was nice. Best compliment I've ever received. Hmm. Good question, huh? That's a that's really good tough, question. That's, that's a good tough. question. Uh, what's like, What's in your head right now? Like, what do you like? You know, it that has to be the best. What have been good compliments that you've received? So, I think for me, the best one is because outside of my playing career, I coach a lot, and so I think the best compliment that I've probably received is that uh, I was. The player that I used to coach is favorite coach. Mm -hmm. Or uh, when I used to coach gymnastics where the parents are like, hey, uh, you impacted my daughter or my son in this way. Uh, and it's the same thing for soccer. So that's probably, for me, the best compliment because I actually really enjoy that. And it's one of these things that I want to continue after my career. So when I hear people say, hey, like you're such a good coach, the way you work with the kids, uh, that's like the first thing that comes on the top of my head because I really enjoy that and I really want to help kids improve and get better. So when the parents like, hey, uh, Timmy loved the training session today. He thought you were a great coach. The way you handled the situation, that was probably like along those lines. But you mm -hmm. understand what I'm trying to say mm -hmm. where like you uh, wanted the compliments where that you're receiving that you've had a big impact on, on a kid, somebody. Exactly. On, a, on somebody else. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly it. And yeah, that's probably that's good. Yeah, that's probably the I think that's big. I think it's a big one. I literally can't think of anything. Like, I mean, I've been, not, I'm not trying to sound cocky, but I'm, obviously I've been complimented. I just don't Look know. Look at me. Obviously I get compliments. <laughs> I just don't know which one, like, I mean. Yeah. No, it's a hard, it's a tough question. It's a tough it's, question. Yeah, it is. Yeah. All yeah right, but well. even, but th you even think about your playing career. Like, cause you, you, you know, like you're left footed, you're quick. You know, yeah, you but probably, is that, if, oh, you're a fast winger. Is that the best compliment you've ever received? No, but imagine they're like, 
they're like, yo, you have like a sick cross or a sick touch or a sick cutback. You don't you don't think that would be like? That's, I mean, no. it's valid, but it's not. Like, I it's, think I think your answer is really good. Yeah, I think the like impact that, some, of on somebody changing else, people's lives and yeah. stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, you you have that question in the back of your head. We can always come back to it, but okay. we'll, we'll go on to the next All one, right. okay? And if, anytime you think of it, All right, I'll say raise it. your so, hand. So my answer was just so good. You just couldn't compute <laughs> Dude, it. You, like, you answered? And I'm just like, dang, how do I talk that? <laughs> All right, next one. Um, actually, we already talked about this. It was about free agency. It was like your advice to current free agents. Um, so we kind of talked about it, but okay. do you have any other quick little piece of advice that while well, another player who's watching this right now Who's a free agent. In the same in the same boat that you guys have been, and, and what you would tell them, I, my, I, I think consistency is just the bank. Make sure you're always training, you're eating well. You, like I said, you got to live like a pro player. You know, yeah. Literally, you have to like stay ready. So yeah. consistency is mine. Yeah. Same thing with DJ. Keep believing. Just, yeah, just have faith and keep believing. Keep you don't, going. Have, you, you don't have faith, man. You I, like how are you ever gonna get anywhere? You know, you got to yeah. believe in yourself mainly. Um. If you guys made an extra ten thousand dollars a month right now, mm -hmm. what would you spend it on, and why? And you can't save it, so you can't save it. It has to be you spent to every spend. other month. Like I'm gonna be like, yo, I'm gonna give you ten thousand dollars every right. single month, but yeah. anything that's left over, I'm taking back. How would you spend it, and what would you do with it? And this okay. could be anything so from like helping out your career, luxury purchases, whatever. And you have to spend it all, right? You have to spend it ten thousand dollars every single month. Oh, that, would be know, that would be amazing so <laughs> the first thing that i would do is actually i would invest in it because i got into more about uh investing when i was with you and chuck and so first thing that would come to my head is if i got that much money number one would be to invest so then that way it would keep growing good answer but that's saving i count what? that as say i count what? that as saving Why? because it's you're putting the wave I, okay. I i think that's great answer but okay i said no saving that's saving it okay uh first thing i would do right now i'm making sure my mom is straight yeah buying her or whatever i'm putting that money towards a house or something paying off you know like uh -huh. a down mortgage payment something. down payment mortgage, mortgage something. i don't know how houses work so i'm not that old <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, would you go all ten grand for that? Yeah, every single month. Or houses, maybe, maybe like a certain percentage, percentage, and then use the rest. Mm -hmm. Something else on yeah. what? Something with my family. I don't know. I'm <laughs> so, telling, dude. With I'm gonna, that they're... much money, I could buy That's like what? what? I could buy <laughs> what? I could buy. <laughs> like, I could put a down payment for a car. I could buy furniture. I could buy okay, like all like any of that. Like that would just bless the game. And so, That's, where would you put the car? And it's all in Tulsa. Yeah. Okay. So you would. So you basically get some place for your mom or your family. Yeah. Make sure my family's straight. Your you know. hub. You'd be spending on the money of like your hub in Tulsa, so everybody exactly. around here is good. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Good. I like okay, it. DJ, that's a good. And now, let, now the house. Let's say you got a five thousand month going to the house every single month. You got the car paid for pretty much. That's all done. Mm -hmm. You got all the the house is furnished. You're still getting ten grand a month. Five grand has to go to mortgage. What are you doing with the rest of it? Every month. Everybody, your family's like, hey, we're good. We're good, DJ. Thank you. <laughs> no now what? <laughs> if I'm not playing football, man, I'm going on vacation or something. But you are. So, so are I'm playing you? football? Yeah. Okay. This guy. <laughs> Sheesh, man. Just mm -hmm. spend it, I guess. Use it. On what? <laughs> Clothes, shoes. <laughs> I don't know. There we go. Okay. So then, then now we're talking about luxury purchase for you. Mm -hmm. Clothes, shoes, Jordans. Jordans. Dior, like stuff like that. Okay. Just, okay. Designer stuff like that. I guess at that point. Would you once, say once I make sure my family's good. Like mm -hmm. once they're good. Okay. Then I'll start, you know, okay, splurging. Cool. I like it. There you go. Took there some go. digging, but we got there. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony, same question. Yeah, yeah. Same no, same thing. Uh, I'm gonna copy DJ's answer a little bit here, but uh I would probably get a new car. So I've been what kind of trying car? to save a Lexus. Lexus two fifty uh three fifty IS. I've been really I just like, yo, I wanted this car. So I would get a car. That wouldn't be the first thing I would I would do, but that would be okay, one okay, of the things yeah. I would do. So I'd get a car. Uh, it'd be in Ottawa. So that way when I go back home, I can have a car to go around freely. I'd probably buy some new cleats right now, buy a couple pairs of boots, uh, buy some clothes, obviously help out my mom with what she needs. Let's say she needed help paying rent, help her out, uh, help my sister out, uh, help some family back home and just uh yeah kind of the same thing i, I mean i mean you buy clothes dude that's like yeah it's like that or 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 you know what actually hmm. i would buy a new camera there you go my okay. Vlogs. There you go. okay so that's i'd buy answer. i'd buy the, nice nice sony camera the sony camera the same one that i was using the yeah. opsm camera i would get one of those i would get lights i would get 
yeah, all, the, all these things for my tripod, everything that can mm-hmm. microphone. grow my microphone, everything that can grow my YouTube. Nice um, editing computer desktop dude, or something. Yeah, like a Mac. Mac. Whole, uh, yeah, I yeah. get a new Mac, actually. I need a new Mac. <laughs> there you go. See? So much stuff. Yeah. That's good. Do okay, good. Good answers. I like that. I'm just, yeah, just curious. It's, it's always Those are good answers. Do you guys the got best to do is just like, I'd spend it, man. <laughs> yeah, on what? Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I just, I'd like spend it on <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Uh, dude. <laughs> it cracks me up. Okay. Now, I said you guys were still playing, but okay, God forbid, you know, knock away everything. Career ending injury happens tomorrow. What are you doing? What are you doing with the next step of your life? Like tomorrow it happens. So that's Thursday. Friday, what are you doing? And, and the doctor, like, like, let's say you get your head completely bashed and he said you can right. never play. Like, what do you, what are you, what's going through your head? And like, what are you like, okay, now I'm going to do this. So. I already know what I would do. And the doctor said 100%, like, you're not coming back. You can, Yeah, 100%, cannot. You will die okay. if you step and kick on, uh, kick a ball again. So I guess what I would do is I would go back home. Obviously. Wait, 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 sorry. I'm going to do the cameras real quick and then okay. you can answer. Okay. Okay, so first of all, I'd be a hella sad and devastated, but I would go back home. Right now, I would probably start coaching. So start running up my private sessions, doing OPSM training, running combines. Cause so right now there, uh, OPSM is in, is planning to go all over. And so if I couldn't play soccer, obviously God willing, uh, no, not God willing, (laughs) knock on wood, that doesn't happen. Uh, but, uh, if, if I did have the career ending injury, I'd probably focus my life around, uh, growing that, growing my YouTube. I mean, I guess I would start training, uh, for my YouTube because I can't play anymore. So I would try and help kids improve technically mm-hmm. uh, throughout my YouTube and just basically travel, but work, work, work in the, in soccer. So, cause yeah, I can't even, it's kind of crazy. Cause I can't even think <laughs> yeah. what I would do if that happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I would be like so lost, mm-hmm. you know? And so, I, I think this is why it's like a good exercise just to think about it. So like, not that it, like it, if it happens, but just like it, to like, cause I think it's, it's hard to not get wrapped up in like your whole brain is just, you're just a footballer, mm-hmm. you know? Right. Cause like, it, then all of a sudden you get some, not a career any injury, but just any down period in football. Mm-hmm. And you're like, that's your whole identity. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, bro. I don't like. So, so, but basically you would want to continue the YouTube channel and helping people with that. Right. You'd want to do some form of like coaching mm-hmm. and training kids. Is that the area you want to go into coaching? Cause there's different a- avenues. Would you want to be more of an agent? Pro coach, college coach, so, young development coach. So I wouldn't want to be an agent because I've seen like it's tough. It's yeah, tough to I, be an I, agent. I would never. I could never be never. an agent ever. Like I would like. Let's say I had a good connection and I knew a player that wanted to go here and this coach. I would help them out, but I would. I would. I would not want to be an agent. Like to be known as an agent. But that's what I want to do. And out of soccer, I'm super blessed because I've gotten so many connections. And so yeah, I'd be a, a coach. I'd be a professional academy coach okay. of a u15 u16 u13 team because i don't know there's just something about the like i i enjoy coaching uh the younger kids through the development because mm-hmm. you know that's basically what i focus on so i do that uh would you do your own coaching one-on-one on the side yeah i would do it yeah so i would do that i would use my youtube for that so since i wouldn't be focusing on my journey i'd then focus it on those kids who I'm coaching yeah. journey. So uh broadcast their development and then still be doing the OPSM combines, you know, just basically uh becoming full time with OPSM and and doing and, that and one. A, an academy and club coach. Academy club coach, you know, of an MLS academy or uh somewhere in Europe and just just really help kids just improve and and where would you live? Ottawa? I wouldn't live in Ottawa. No. If anything, I'd live in Tulsa. I like I love Tulsa, but I wouldn't live in Tulsa either. I would probably go uh to let's FC Dallas. Say I was coaching uh, like the U15 of FC Dallas or something. I'd live in Dallas or I would go. So you would go to the city based off where you could get the job. So it's not yeah. like I'm going to live here. It's more like I want to do MLS Academy coach and wherever I live. I'd go there. Yeah. Or you know what? Cuz Australia and New Zealand like uh, Australia for the youth, they have really good soccer academies yeah, so like in perth and melbourne and those places are nice so yeah. melbourne could be a spot that i'd go to i'd go to new zealand you know so okay all right yeah. good I, I mean yeah i like it that's okay. a good answer dj uh 
I think my life would still always be around football all the time, mm -hmm. uh, whether I'm coaching. Uh, but I would, you know, something that I really probably would try if I didn't play football would be fashion design school. That's something that. Wow. Yeah. That's something that interests me. But I mean, that's obviously if I didn't play soccer or whatever. Mm -hmm. But do you see yourself in Tulsa? No. No? No. No. Your whole family's here. Everything's yeah, yeah. here. DJ, I was going to say, DJ, you're but super I have, like. I kind of have family like everywhere though. So I feel like if I went to California, I feel like I'd be good. I have family in Florida. So like, yeah, no, I don't want to stay. In. And, and stay. what city do you have in like the top of your head right now? That I run a retiring or just live in? Just live in. Like, like thinking about your life right now, are you imagining yourself by the beach in Florida, beach in California? You imagine some of the mountains in Colorado? My heart is in California. Like I really want to retire in California. Mm -hmm. So if I could live there, if I have the opportunity to live there, I would love to. I just know it's super expensive there. But maybe like Utah, Nevada, mm -hmm. those are both beautiful like states. Yeah. So. Maybe and there. I want. I want to stay on the West Coast. Okay. And then, uh, when when you say involves with football, do you want to? Are you thinking like coach, like maybe head coach, coach? head coach, anything the highest level you can, or is, do you have like an age range that you're thinking that you're seeing? Definitely older kids. Definitely older kids. Mm -hmm. So you just low kids. Yeah, yeah. low kids. <laughs> I just I rather coach. Low it becomes more babysitting with with like under <laughs> ten, uh, right. under eleven. No, but, I def so, not just because I were, I'm really competitive. So like I'd really want to be like a competitive coach. You know, a mm -hmm. great team that you know can play. So, uh -huh. and would you same thing like MLS Academy type setup? Or? If I, I mean, if I got the opportunity, I would yeah. definitely take that because I mean, that's huge. Okay. So we got in, cool. in California somewhere, somewhere, West coast, somewhere, West coast, somewhere, Nevada, somewhere around there. Even Portland, like Portland's beautiful. Man. Portland's uh, you so, like the rain? Not the rain. <laughs> Portland yeah, when I did not go to Portland. Dude, when it's I was cold. in Portland, it did not rain once. <laughs> I swear. Cold. Yeah. Well, I mean, once. you go there in June, August, <laughs> September. Sure. I'm like, bro, this is beautiful. Bro, I go there. Cold. It snows there too. Don't go there. That's yeah. crazy, man. Um, it just rain. It rains all the time too. But, uh, no, nah, okay. Okay. And then, so you're involved with coaching wherever you can where you want to be involved mm -hmm. with the game and then maybe on the side do some fashion yeah design i mean stuff. obviously if it worked out made money with it if i could find a job doing that because those are mm -hmm. that, i heard that's like really hard to find a job in fashion design yeah. so yeah i mean that's something i would that would interest me if i didn't play football youtube channel's got three videos at this point yeah. <laughs> did you start your own merch dude see i've, I've thought in that far ahead so right. That you don't think I'm lagging. I, I feel, you, I'm I feel lagging, you, bro. No, that's cool. Okay, cool, cool. That's actually kind of cool because I've known you for two years, but I didn't even know you were into like fashion and design. So yeah. that's a cool answer. I like that. I really, that's why podcasts are great. You learn about people. Yeah. I love them. I, I really like doing them. Um, okay. When did you feel like you guys were at your absolute like fittest, sharpest, mentally strongest period of your career? Like the day you're like, this is the, I'm, I'm at the high of like, and I'm not saying like your general prime. Cause like, I, I, I think we would all think that we're in the prime of our mm -hmm. careers up until now. Like even for me being 28, almost 29, I still feel like that, mm -hmm. but I'm saying like a moment, like a week or a month or something where you're like, I'm feeling fit, sharp, confident, mm -hmm. happy. Do you have a period that sticks out? I do. I have two. Can it be two or no? No. Oh, actually, I'll give you two. I was going to say it Can has to be one, but one? you know what? Let's do two. Okay. Well, if you have to. I have two. Okay. So. The first one was, so I just, I started playing with the academy, with the Ottawa Fury Academy when I was 15 for a whole year. Ended up switching coaches. The second coach cut me uh, because he just felt like I wasn't as good uh, as the other players. And so during that year, I, I worked my butt off. I trained every single day. I still trained with the team. Uh, even though I wasn't on the team, I'd go to training sessions with the guys and uh, the year of 2016, I had tryouts coming up for uh, what was going to be the, the first year of the Pro Academy. And I remember during that time, throughout the whole training that I did the whole year, I was so mentally like focused. I, w I had like the only thing I could do was to sign or not to sign, but to make the team. And so during that time, I remember uh, I would before training sessions, I had a routine. Like I would go to work in the morning, I coach gymnastics for like four or five hours, go home, take a nap, uh, wake up, put my motivational music in, go to trials. And I, I just remembered during those trials, I just like, I was so confident in everything I did, my passing, uh, my finishing. And I don't know if you guys have ever had these situations, but like times where you do things and you're just like, what the, like, mm -hmm. like, it's just, it's so instinctual. Right. It just right. stuff you're just happens. Like, you're like, how did I just how do that? How did I just do that? So like that first time and. 
And that year, I think that's the first time that I, I felt, I was like, wow, this is, this is going to be good. And then my second answer would be preseason with FC Tulsa. Mm -hmm. Came in, Mike had us going crazy, like every day, double days. And I remember that time I was trying to do three sessions, remember? Because I was so like, I was so like, man, I want to be Young like, guy, man, naive. And then you guys were like, you're an idiot. You got yeah. to do three sessions and... And then Jeff literally came up to me. He's like, you need to talk to your boy. Anthony. <laughs> he's like, he wants to do Anthony. a third session in the double days. I was like, bro. And I felt, and I, even that time, like you I was great. so, yeah. I felt so great, but I was so like, at the time inside, I was so frustrated because I was like, man, I want to get better so bad, mm. you know, but these guys, these guys are professionals. You guys have been in that environment. So obviously I listened to you guys, you know, but at that time I was like, man, I wish I could train more. Like the, when we did like the beep test and stuff, yeah. remember, like, I think you, were, you, you won it or no, you came I, second. No, I got Renan, Renan came Renan. first. I was like top five and I'm never like, like yeah. the top fittest uh, on the team. And so during that time, I just felt like either it's like a tie, honestly, it's a tie, but uh, I felt so confident when I came in and I just felt super fit. And I, yeah, preseason FC Tulsa and then my tryouts in 2016 with the Ottawa Fury FC Academy. I like it. Uh, for me, kind of the same thing. I mean, <coughs> I feel like I have one, you know, my pro career and then I have one like just playing high school. My senior year of high school was probably one of the best football like i just i enjoyed it i was yeah. scoring goals i mean we, we didn't we didn't we, had, we were supposed to be the team that was going to win it that year because literally every single player on my team went d1 or d2 uh-huh so we have a we had a pretty stacked team but we ended up choking the semis but <laughs> no i really like that year was i enjoyed football like it was beautiful like it was just mm -hmm. awesome moment and then probably my first year with tulsa mm-hmm uh -huh. At the end of the season, like, I mean, that team was, we didn't do so well, but I mean, we had our, our moments that last month was probably the best for me. Cause I didn't sign that year. I didn't sign until like the mid of the season. And so I remember the last month we had like three or four games and I just felt like I was flying. Like I felt great. Like yeah. I was just getting into the groove, yeah. you know, and then season ends. But yeah, that definitely was probably one of the better moments for me. I had, I felt like at Tulsa, my second year, I just, I would. I would feel good and then I would get hurt. Yeah. yeah. And it just start back over again. And then, mm -hmm. but I never felt like I had like a consistent like month and a half or like two months where I was just like flying, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, little tiny injuries are not yes. consistently starting lineup or like even like confidence sometimes. Like we're just like, like sometimes you just are like the ball's out there and you just like hit it. You're like, you know what's going in. Other times you're overthinking it. Like, okay, I need to get mm -hmm. this on frame this way it's just i'm just it's funny when those moments happen and usually it's like when you're the like the older guy on the team mm -hmm. you you're in a good routine a good spell of every, all the stars are aligning like that yeah. you know mm -hmm. so that's that's good um next question how has your career <coughs> gone differently than you first imagined so if, when when little anthony and little dj <laughs> you know after during yeah. your senior year like right when you're like okay i'm gonna go pro you always have vision, visions of how mm -hmm. it's going to go yeah. and they're never right. Yeah. Why, how is that different? Uh, for me, it was, it was probably cause I just thought that I was going to go here and I was going to sign in France. Or, yeah. I was going to go to France. I was going to sign. I was going to go and play in Australia and I was going to go kill it. That's what I always thought. Mm -hmm. But like you said, it never happens. And so when I first signed with the roughnecks, my first professional contract, I didn't even, have that in my mind like I, mm. I had no idea my goal was during the time i was in new zealand i wanted to kill it play in the winter league play in the summer league do well and get picked up by auckland city or something kill it and then go to europe at yeah. the time that's what my 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 headspace was at and then this opportunity came out of nowhere so during that time i was just like i was like wow like i i i didn't i completely i didn't even know i was going to be in tulsa i didn't even know where tulsa oklahoma was <laughs> i thought there was a beach i thought there was a beach i know i yeah, remember that bro. i literally remember I, that i had, I I had no that. idea so bro, like, i literally was like hey bro we should go to the beach this weekend it's 15 minutes down the road he's like yeah bet fam i, I want to go i remember I, I, that bro. i didn't say so bet fam this, this guy was tw this is 20, 21 20, 20, yeah, didn't you 20, think like 19. texas was like above like no i didn't say anything about texas no i didn't say anything about texas it wasn't me the kid was probably someone else He's yeah, gotten I'm still, smarter. I mean, I'm still dumb. But yeah, but you've gotten smarter. I gotten a little smarter. Uh huh. But yeah, so that's like the whole time. I just thought wherever I was going at the time, that's where I was gonna sign pro. And that's where you would progress. And that's up where I would ladder. progress. But that didn't happen at all. It was like 
I, I got cut or this this situation happened and it made me even better. It made me even more hungrier. Like during the time in Australia, I was struggling, you know, sometimes I didn't know where I was going to sleep. And then during that time, I, but I thought before that I was going to be like, oh, I'm going to be playing second division in Australia. I'm going to be killing it. Ended up going to Tulsa and then signing there. Mm-hmm. See, for me, hmm. <laughs> I like whenever I first initially thought, hey, I want to go pro. My first thought was like, hey, I want to go to England. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like so easy. My being so naive, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go here. I'm going to get a trial. I'm gonna kill it. It's signed. Didn't didn't happen, obviously. Didn't know how difficult it was to get into England or especially at that time. That was like 2018 or whatever. Speaking of, that's like the hardest place to get a visa yeah. as an American. Like yeah. you literally need to be national team in order to get like a clear yeah. cut visa in there. So it was, it was way more difficult than I thought. So mm-hmm. I felt like just starting in your own market. That's what uh, one of my mentors told me. Just start in your own market. See how well you do. Mm-hmm. And that's how I got basically mm-hmm. playing. So you kind of just thought like a easier route in England, a more clear path. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden you're just like, just wow. Just get played. <laughs> I was, I was <laughs> like, I'm just going to play non-league or something. Hopefully yeah. get pick, picked up. Somebody that's that was my thought, you know, just play non league, get picked up, but it's not as easy as everybody says it is, or thinks yeah. it is. Yeah, did you have any teams interested at all, or was it all visa was just too hard to get? Uh, well, it was mainly off connections, uh huh. And it's crazy because it was actually Mike, yeah, it was Mike that I was talking to at the time. That's that was funny because I know he had sent somebody, but that kid had already like that kid had an English dad or something like that, that so yeah. it's way more easier for that. So I just I thought being so naive, just thinking it was that easy, just mm-hmm. I'm gonna hop in. Good yep. sign. It's not that easy. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, if you got English citizenship, then yeah, you're, sure. You can set. start 12th division. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're good. Like, it doesn't matter. That's why I would love to have like some form, like a European passport. Yeah. Exactly. Just to man. bounce around. And especially like mm-hmm. uh, once you get towards the tail end, you're like, oh, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'll play third division in Finland for mm-hmm. experience. I think that'd be mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. European passport would be so clutch. Man. Yeah. So, uh, bro. Could be worse, though. So yeah. 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 Could be worse. Facts. American's not bad. Yeah um next question uh okay now what was the happiest you've ever been on the field you kind of we already talked about it a little bit with like when you felt the best but when was the happiest mine is making my debut honestly as a pro yeah i remember calling my mom after i was so happy Mm -hmm. it was honestly like one of the even though we got smacked that game i remember (laughs) it was like four zero against who'd uh, you play we were in, uh, where were we? Orange County. Uh-huh. Orange County. That's where I made my debut. But no, it was the best, bro. It was, you can't explain the feeling. Yeah. You know, making your debut, bro. It's having that name on the back. Yeah. Was the that best. in the, the yeah, well. championship stadium they have there? Uh, that's, that's their, uh, I don't know if it's, the, do they have a new one now? No. It's like that same little. Yeah, it's a stadium. It's a stadium. stadium. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's nice. I and mean, the weather was perfect too, I remember. Yeah. Everything about that. So, so Orange, County, bro, yeah, Orange County, bro. That was the best point. Yeah. Every single day, you don't have, even have to check the weather. You're like, it's 70 degrees and 70 sunny. Degrees. <laughs> no wind. Let's go to the beach today. Yeah. Man. What about you? Happiest you've ever been on the field? Uh, Same thing, honestly. Like, because that was my first. I made my debut in Orange County, too. Mm-hmm. And I remember. Same I had, field? That's same crazy. Field. Yeah, that same is field. funny. That is funny. That's same field, crazy. Bro. I remember at halftime, we were down 2 1, and uh, everyone else was going back inside, and Michael was like, no, no, don't go back inside. Warm up. And I was so nervous. Like, I was on the field at half, running up and down, like, doing juggles, kicking Dude, the ball. Dude, you feel like a little kid I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. And I was just so nervous. And then uh, we ended up winning that game. I played well. We ended up winning 5-2 or yeah. 5-3. And then I remember after, uh, everyone was so happy. Like, the fans were asking to take photos. And even Mimi and her, her yeah. parents were there. They're like, Anthony. And yeah. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> was about to go in. I was, uh, and I was just, like, so happy. And I, I, like, I kind of embarrassed myself because, you know, when normally when you're going into a game, you're supposed to be focused and whatnot. And as I'm subbing in, I hear I hear me. I hear someone in, like, Anthony. I'm like, wait, I don't know anyone here. I yeah. look over. I see Mimi and her mom and, uh, and dad. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I'm, like, jumping up and down. And Mike's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> Mike's looking at me like, what are you doing? Uh, but, yeah, that was probably the happiest time of my life because it was my first game. We won. Uh, and then in the change room, you know, like how it is the mm-hmm. environment. And I remember being in the change room, we were playing the music, uh, throwing the water bottles around. Everyone just just vibing, bro. That was definitely my my happiest day. Yeah. That's funny. So both of you guys' happiest day on the field is on the same field. Same field, yeah. bro. That's crazy. That is crazy. That's pretty cool. 
a year a apart. Two. A year apart. A year apart. Two. Yeah. What about you? What was yours? Happiest moment on the field? Yeah. Um, Sacramento Republic, 2019, the same uh, same year as you actually, where I got back from my second sports hernia, mm-hmm. and like because I had been at that point, um, like all St. Louis struggled, New Zealand, you mm-hmm. know, struggled down there. Came mm-hmm. back, another surgery, and then I returned at Sacramento Republic in front of like 10,000 fans. And like, I just remember being like, I, after three years of struggling, mm-hmm. I was like, wow, I'm finally like yeah. back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like the same reason that's like my best contract, the, the contract I'm mo- most proud of mm-hmm. was that 2019 Roughnecks one. Cause I got back there because mm-hmm. you like took it for granted, not took it for granted, but you don't realize how amazing that is until you don't have it anymore, which mm-hmm. is why free agency sucks. But then mm-hmm. you're going to enjoy this next place where you go in the team environment like you talked about you're just so happy to be back mm-hmm. and you're not going to be like uh oh, training sucks you're just like no i'm i'm here i get i get to do this i was at my couch last mm-hmm. week now uh, now exactly. i'm here so yeah that was me sacramento republic i remember the hearing the drums and everything I'm like damn yeah. i made it back i didn't think i would but that's i made cool. it back that's yeah that's so cool. i think the camera just i think it's probably it, it turned off right yeah oh so you got the what is it called this the fits or whatever Fitzer. Oh, Fitzer, whatever. <laughs> Bro, I don't know how to pronounce that. The, fi- the Fister. The Fister? Yeah, I got the Fist. I'm getting Johnson, I think. The Johnson and Johnson. Johnson? That's just the one that, dose yeah, one, huh? One yeah. dose. Oh, easy one and done. Did you feel any symptoms or anything after yours? Or did you feel yeah, sick? Yeah, no, I only spoke in Spanish for like a week. Shut <laughs> up, <this is> idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got three more questions for you guys. Okay? You can power these out. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go, bro. Okay. Oh, no. I didn't cross this one off. I got two more questions for you guys. Um, what's something that most people misunderstand about you? Oh, that's a hard question. Yeah. Like when, when people like think about Anthony, they don't really know you. Right. Or even if they do know you, what's something they get wrong? That's a good that, question, huh? That, that I'm an F boy. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Uh... That's a really good question, bro. Damn, this guy, came long, prepa- bro. this guy came prepared. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't even know what... I mean, people think I'm shy, but like once you like get me, like once I'm comfortable, like I'm not as shy as I usually am. But Or like people think I'm soft because mm-hmm. I'm light-skinned. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. Like, well, you're not. <laughs> catch these hands. Like, nah, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I mean, just shyness, I feel like. Mm-hmm. But you are a little. You're more shy than other people. I'm. I yeah. I'm more reserved. But like once I get yeah, comfortable, like I'm fine. Yeah. That's a really hard question. But wow, I'm still thinking about it. The people. Because yeah, like once you're in a in a comfortable environment, you, you're friends with people. You're with your family. You're yeah. not. You're not like reserved to yourself. Quiet. Still can't think of anything. I can't. Yeah, my, you're gonna have to go first on this one, Matt. Uh, DJ went first. I already went. Yeah, he went, he went first, but you're gonna have to. You know. Um, well, I think in terms of like YouTube, that I'm more serious than I actually am. You know, mm-hmm. like I think because like I always am talking about like I, it's all about football, mm-hmm. and that's what I take the most serious. But besides that, I don't take anything serious. You know, right. like life jokes, yeah. Mimi, whatever. It's just all fun. <laughs> he said Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but seriously, I always like. Uh, I, but it's funny because like when I'm just talking about football or like nutrition or talk, I get super like serious mm-hmm. about that. Mm-hmm. But it's not me really. That's just that one aspect about yeah. me. And then other than that, it would be like. Uh, um. Actually, that's about it. I think that's it. Yeah, and I'm just. Yeah. Uh, that, but that's like YouTube. But I think like if people that like friends or other like people that meet me, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't know actually. It's a good question. Whoever that's thought of that question, that's, that's a good that's question. That's an amazing question, man. I can't think of anything. You can't think of anything. No. Well, you can. We can table it, and if you could, if you think about something, you can come back to it. What was the question that you yeah, had to think about? Uh, was, oh, be- best compliment. Yeah. Have you thought about anything? Uh I mean, I mean, it's family related. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, my little cousin. And my mom have both told me, you know, you know, I'm your favorite soccer player or, or I'm their favorite. And, you know, that's mm-hmm. more heartwarming than anything. I mm-hmm. feel like. mm-hmm. Especially my little, my little cousin, you know, he's like four or five. He's playing soccer. Mm-hmm. Cool, you know? so, so it's like, it's against like your impact on somebody else. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's it's my little cousin for him to say that, you know, it's beautiful. To probably. be like a, like you're a role model in his yeah. eyes and everything. That's cool. Okay. Well, you keep thinking about the, what's something people misunderstand about you. Okay. Uh, we'll do the last question. 
uh, who has big, who has been, this is kind of funny. We just, we were talking about this with you, but who has been the biggest mentor throughout your entire career for you guys? Hmm. For me, biggest mentor would be Godwin, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Because so remember when I told you guys you, don't know Godwin, we've kind of touched on it, but yeah. Godwin is, uh, Jeff and Godwin are brothers and we've mm -hmm. all played with Jeff, but Godwin is the older brother who runs OPSM. Mm -hmm. He's a, our, all of our agent. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's, yeah, I would say, basically I, yeah, your, I, would say I would say, I would say Godwin. Cause remember, uh, when I, I always bring back France, you know, cause it's such a turning point in my career. And that time while I was in France, when I was, I was, had nowhere to go. I didn't have no idea what I would do. Uh, I remember I messaged Godwin at the time because he was he was also doing uh he was going around europe looking for pro trials and and trying to break into in, into a team and sign and he came so imagine he came from spain and he came to live with me in france during that time not a lot of people know this but he came uh for a week and when he came he was like anthony this is what you have to do you have to get a highlight tape i didn't have a highlight tape mm -hmm. jeff made my highlight tape Jeff taught me how to do it, so he made a highlight tape because they both came together. Mm -hmm. So they were on their journey of signing a pro contract, and they were like, you know what? Let's go to France, too. Let's do it. So imagine we went to <laughs> to pro clubs. We went to Bordeaux. We went to the stadium to try and talk to <laughs> at Bordeaux. People at Bordeaux. You know what I mean? Bordeaux's so, beautiful. I love Bordeaux, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Super nice. Food's amazing. But mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, at that time, and he told me, you know what? You need a CV. He created my CV. And so... I think about it. If I was in France and I had no idea about this stuff, I would have never learned that stuff if mm -hmm. Godwin didn't come from Spain. So, and I always, and he always reminds me because I talk to Godwin almost every day to all FaceTime and, and whatnot. But he'll, he'll, he, everything that he's saying, he, he'll, he'll talk about, he, he's been through the same situations, mm -hmm. whether it's with life or with soccer. And so he's been my biggest mentor because he's, he's been trying to help me with off the field stuff, on the field. Obviously, as my agent, I, I'm closer to him because we were friends before he became an agent, right? So the relationship that we have is is not your average agent and player uh, relationship. But I think for me, 100 percent would have to be would have to be Godwin. I, I can't believe the <laughs> Anth uh, little 18 year old Anthony in France. Yeah. Little 18 year old Anthony in France not only went to a country that's very hard to get a 17, visa. 17, 17, 17. But you went there without a highlight video or CV. Yeah. <laughs> That's you I said mean, you talked to the board. You said what? Bro, we we walked and we talked. We went to Bordeaux Stadium and we talked and we're like, yeah, we're supposed to beat this. Yeah, yeah. It was just. That's, you, try was to, just you try to bullshit your way into force, something. Force. Yeah, at that time, bro, I had no idea about it because I had no one. Like, I had no one yeah. to tell me about it at that mm -hmm. time. So I had no idea that you need a highlight tape, a CV, all that stuff. And so when I went there. You know, at least I went to Germany with the with the highlight video and CV. <laughs> you went with the highlight tape and video. Yeah, you went with it. Oh okay, yeah. Well, well, then I because I had I had like a mentor as well. His okay. name is Marcus, and he basically would he was from Germany, played like in the third division there, mm -hmm. and like had would take my highlight video and CV that I had made, and he kind of like put it and used his German connections and his German speaking ability to get me mm -hmm. trials, and he got me like 10, 12 trials. trials yeah. Wow. It was, it was awesome. Traveled around with me, stayed in an Airbnb with him and stuff. Wow, that's yeah. cool. For me, see, I mean, I haven't had the same mentor for ever. Mm -hmm. I kind of had like different, I kind of switch around. Like my mom's been kind of a life mentor for me my whole life just because it's been me and her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she has to be father and, and mother, but she's been my mentor definitely. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one of my old club coaches he's definitely a big he's had a big impact on me what's his name wayne farmer wayne yeah oh wayne, yeah, you know yeah, wayne. From, from, of course oh, we all know yeah. it hey, did, you know, did you know if you know this but we all played together in 2019 <laughs> where, where wayne was the gm remember my that bad, my bad my bad my bad but yeah he's definitely uh so, yeah ever. wayne you know you don't know him <laughs> dude i totally forgot my bad. he's still the gm is he not uh, I don't, I don't know what his actual role is, but he's still heavily involved in the club. No, yeah, that's I love that dude, man. He's definitely, especially in club, my club years, he was mm -hmm. the biggest mentor I had. But I mean, like now, I really haven't really had a mentor for like at least the last year. Just been talking to Jason Teal. I know mm -hmm. you guys, you guys mm -hmm. talk to him. Yeah, yeah, I do. But I mean, that's the, been the only guy that I've been really talking to. But other than that, I haven't had a mentor that's been, you know, besides my mom, just consistently with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that happens though. Like you. Like you 
as you go on to different stages, yeah, you exactly. need a different mentor for different stages. Exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah. But I think it's like same for, like my parents were for sure the whole mm -hmm. through the whole, the whole way. way but like in terms of like impact on the I mean, my dad was pretty big on that. But like I've had like Matt Atencio and Marcus, the guys who helped me mm -hmm. go over to Germany. Mm -hmm. And then yes. sorry, bro. <laughs> well, yeah. What so, is it okay. is your bedtime? Wait, no. no, it's not my bedtime. I'm good. But I actually I wanted to talk about another mentor. Is that okay? It's actually you for YouTube. Oh. <laughs> I, I honestly, I swear yeah. that popped in my head. Because because I was watching your YouTube videos even before I met you. Wait, so, when, when did you first see my video? What? So I saw your videos in Germany, but consistently. No, was, like what? Where were you in 2016 then? I was. I was. Were you in uh, France at that point? That's no, no. That was before. I, that was one year before I went to. Oh France. damn! Okay. So that's when I was. I was trying to get. No, that's what. That's when I was trying to get back on the team that I got cut from. Yeah. So I I, <clears throat> I started seeing your videos. And then, and then obviously, uh, kept watching you until you ignored my message in New Zealand <laughs> when I wanted to. You still answer all your DMs? I, was, I do, man. I, I, I try to. We'll see. I really, I really do try to. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> it's, it's getting kind of crazy, but I do. But yeah, so for you, you were actually a mentor to me for YouTube, mm -hmm. especially, you know, bringing me out to Portland and showing me basic things, how to create a thumbnail. Like, this is how you do it, this transition. So, yeah. Showing you Instagram before, Reels. Instagram reels. No, you actually did, bro. You put me on. You put me on Instagram reels. Like you, bro, all that stuff, you know, uh, that was you that mentored me. You're going to make that. me cry. So, so I, yeah, it's actually kind of crazy. There's a bunch of different mentors that you have. And obviously my mom for life, mm -hmm. you know, and God went in footy, but bro, you were a mentor to me too on YouTube. That's pretty crazy. That's yeah, funny. For me, like whenever, uh, 26, when you were doing the video, remember when I messaged you? Yeah, like, and you, did he answer you? He answered me the first wow, time. Wow, look time at that! At least he, at least he answered you, bro. He got to, that's where we got to the point. The second message was at the point where I'm like, okay, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do it. I wish I could, but I can't. No, but I was definitely watching your videos, taking everything I could from your videos. You know, so that I mean, kind of that kind of did help me. You know, because I, you, you kind of put more knowledge out there for players. You know, you know what I'm mean? saying? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like about how yeah, you just highlight how video when you go over to Germany. <laughs> If you're gonna go over to Europe. At least have a highlight video on CV. That's yeah. The, but imagine if I didn't I, at 17, I didn't have someone telling me that. It's like mm -hmm. I no, was I like, oh, I'm going here. To, it's true. You know? It's it's kind of what we mm -hmm. talked about. You have to really experience it. And yeah. then the thing is, it's like when you experience it, then you might like if you don't have like it, you might give your knowledge to a few players. Mm -hmm. But like that's why I mean that's why YouTube. I was like, wow, I could literally reach. Even my first mm -hmm. video got 30 views. It's like I reached mm -hmm. 30 people. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I was like, yeah. I reached 30 freaking people. That's crazy. But that is it's just funny. That's how I, I saw it. No, that's that's cool to hear. I appreciate that, guys. Thank you. Yeah, I got you. You're blushing now, but it's okay. Uh, <laughs> luckily, the camera is not on me anymore. It's, this is the only one that's on, so it's on you guys. Um, yeah, so that's that's all the questions I have. Hope you guys liked those questions. Last I chance did. on the uh, best compliment and misunderstood. Well, he said yeah. is. He said is. Oh, yeah, you said yours. Misunderstood. misunderstood. Honestly, I can't I can't think of anyone, like, of anything. Hmm. Yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah. No, no. You, that might once you find. I think. Do you know what? I'll think about uh, like an honest answer, and then I'll I'll give it to you. No, no, no! Don't right. give it to me. Create a YouTube video about it, and I'll shout it out. Hey. Okay, let's go. Bet. Shake on it. <laughs> let's get it. Uh, those good social media ideas. That's that's what I'm here for. Okay. Well, um, that was the uh, Against All Odds podcast with you guys. This is your third time on the podcast now. Third time or no? I can't remember. Did we do one podcast with you the first year or two? Because then I came back, remember, during the time when I came to visit? I think we only did one that first year. Then you did one when you visited. And then, yeah, this, and then this one third. And this yeah. is your second time second. on the podcast. Second podcast. Well, welcome back, guys. Hopefully, we'll come back for your fourth and third in another year or so. Hopefully. Um, best yeah. of luck with uh, going out to South Bend, Anthony. Thanks, best bro. of luck with your next opportunities, wherever those are. And, uh, yeah, all, again, these guys' uh, social media stuff is going to be in the description as well. Go follow them. Go check them out. And then any last words before I uh, end the podcast? Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for having me. No, no problem. It. No problem. And I'm still the two-touch king, but. <laughs> okay, that's where I ended. See you guys later. <laughs>